Good morning from uh, New Delhi, India. I am here uh, welcoming the Healing Place online community on day 14 for the 21 days of fasting and prayer and seeking God's face uh, for new things and new revelation. And I pray that this morning it would be very special as we wait for people to join in. I'm sure we're going to have uh, a whole bunch of people from the Healing Place online community, as well as friends from around the world who would connect and join in for this special time of seeking God's face, learning from his word, and uh, just opening our heart to the Holy Spirit to say, Lord, what do you have for us today? I know it's going to be an amazing time. I, it's nighttime there in Shreveport and also in the United States as we are starting Tuesday here. You are on Monday night, but I believe that even though we are so many hours apart, so uh, our distance is so much, but thank God for technology that God has given to us to begin uh, this time of uh, praying together, seeking God and hearing from the Holy Spirit what he has uh, to show to us and give to us. And I'm sure it's going to be a great time uh, as we share this moment together. Uh, today is day number 14, and uh, we are talking about obedience, uh, how obedience brings God's favor upon our life. Many times we don't realize the aspect of how obedience can change uh, even situations and circumstances uh, in our lives. But as we get ready to seek the Lord, the scripture verse for today is, uh, uh, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? Luke chapter 6, verse 46. You know, many times we don't realize that God expects us to be the person that he wants us to be more than the things that we can do for him. Uh, the enemy always brings us to a place where uh, we think that our actions and the works that we do for God are more important to him and that he rewards us for that more than for being what he wants us to be. I was reminded of a scripture a few weeks ago and I shared it with uh, our church here in, uh, at Grace Assembly. And that scripture is taken from Matthew chapter 15. Now I'm going to read a, a whole passage of scripture there, but I'm going to build on this aspect of how obedience brings God's favor upon our lives. I remember when uh, uh, Samuel came to Saul and uh, Saul was uh, in impatience and looking at what people were saying and just being driven by the opinion of people because by now he was this famous king. Uh, he had uh, God's hand was upon him and everything that he did was succeeding. And here we see uh, Sa Sa Samuel uh, begins to come and explain to Saul that Saul, what you did was wrong. <clears throat> and uh, he explains to Saul and says, you know what, Saul, I want you to understand that for God, obedience is better than sacrifice. You may have thought that you are uh, capable to do the sacrifice. You may have thought that what you're doing is right. But in God's sight, what you did is wrong because God expects obedience from his people. This morning, obedience is a word that many times we think it's not a right word or it's a hard word. You know, how can I obey everything that God says? But yet, I want you to know that it carries power. Obedience carries the power that uh, God releases as his people walk the path that he has chosen for them. You know, God's word does not lie. When you read God's word, you understand that God's word is so true and so powerful that when we begin to not only read it, but become doers of that word, suddenly favor hits us. And many times our blessings, our healing, our forgiveness is blocked because we are not following the pattern of obedience that God has given for his people. And if you have joined in now, or if you, I, I would really encourage you to, to begin to share this with your friends, this video, and let others know, because there may be some this morning who are at that point where God wants to release his favor upon them, but due to lack of obedience, uh, that they are not receiving the favor of God. You know, many times when we, when we look into our lives, we see there are certain areas that may seem very insignificant to us, but to God, even those small areas are very, very important. The enemy wants us to believe that if I go to church or if I do these Christian things, 
that God is pleased because sometimes Christian traditions and Christian things that we do in our life, uh, we think that those things when we do it, God is pleased because everyone is doing it and it looks so good on the outside. But the Bible says that God sees our heart, our motives on why we do what we do. Our dedication to God is not enough unless it is completed with obedience. And let me read this scripture for you, though it's a little long scripture, but I think it's going to be meaningful to us this morning. It's taken from Matthew chapter 15. I start from verse number one. Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and they asked him, why don't your followers obey the unwritten laws which have been handed down to us? Now, this is from the New Century Version translation. Now, there, there were things that God had given Moses and the people of Israel to follow. But apart from that, there were traditions that the nation of Israel gathered together. And sometimes these religious minded people who had the Pharisee spirit uh, started to emphasize that if you follow this, this is how it's going to go. And they began to question Jesus that, you know what, if you eat food without washing your hands like your disciples do, it's going to uh, bring God's judgment over you. And this is what Jesus said to them. Uh, Jesus said that, and they said they don't wash their hands when they eat. And Jesus answered, and why do you refuse to obey God's command so that you can follow your own tradition? Why do you refuse to obey God's command in view of the traditions that you have? <clears throat> in other words, the Pharisees were emphasizing their traditions even over God's command. Today, we're talking about obedience. Sometimes the enemy wants us to feel that, you know, what we do is all right. You know, look at the others. They don't do this, but at least you do it. They don't go to church, but at least you go. And many times we use that as a balance to see the favor and the blessing of God. But this morning, the Holy Spirit is reminding us again, it's not on tradition. It's not on our religious practices that God is pleased, not on what we do, but how we are in relationship to God. And for God, your obedience is the key for him to release his favor and blessings over you. Even though we are fasting and praying, uh, even though we are seeking God, but unless we walk in obedience, our fasting and praying is also in vain. And I pray this morning that we would take this word very seriously because as I was preparing for this over the past few days, I began to search my own heart and say, God, is there anything in my life that I have uh, missed out uh, in, in, in relationship to what you want me to say. When we seek God, when we want the favor of God, the presence of God in our life, we cannot enter his presence and experience his presence unless we walk in obedience. And as we continue the story, this is how it goes. This is what Jesus is, is saying to them. Uh, Jesus said, God's told you to honor your father and mother and anyone who says cruel things to his father or mother must be put to death. But you say a person can tell his father or mother, I have something I could use to help you, but I have given it to God already. You teach that person not to honor the father or mother. and You reject what God is saying for your sake. And in the new century version, it says for your own set of rules. You not only honor, don't honor your father and mother, but you put God as the reason why you're not doing it. But that was not true. And he says, because of tradition that Jesus uses these words, you are hypocrites. Now, I want you to take this word very seriously. It may look like a strong word this morning, but as we are into the season of fasting and prayer, the purpose of fasting and prayer is not to twist God's hand to do things for us, answer our prayers, but to align ourselves, our will to the will of God. And that requires obedience. You know, if we begin to align ourselves to God's will, we begin to release God's favor in a way like never before. Even as we are going through this time of talking about obedience, if you have prayer requests, if you have needs, just begin to type it in. If you have questions, if you want to say something uh, this morning, just begin to type it in because I believe the Holy Spirit is going to release such a, a favor upon us today like we have never experienced before. We are talking about obedience and how obedience can revolutionize our life, how it can change the very aspect of what we are, have been looking at. And many times we are at the threshold of our breakthrough. We are at that place where God says, you know what? Your breakthrough is just around the corner. But because of lack of obedience or incomplete obedience, incomplete obedience, we are not seeing God's hand move over our situation. 
Sometimes situations and circumstances come just in our life. Everyone faces them. But only obedience will give you the breakthrough to get through those circumstances and those situations. I realize that many times people serve us things that we don't want to have. Our life is filled with garbage and stuff that people throw into our life. But it is not what we receive from the people, but how we react to those situations and walk in obedience that brings God's hand over us. My challenge to you this morning or this evening where you are, that as you uh, end this day and begin the new day, that you would really ask the Holy Spirit, say, Holy Spirit, please help me to walk in that area of obedience. Now, many times we are walking in disobedience, but we don't realize that we are walking in disobedience. Simply because, like I said, the people around us do the same things. It seems good to us. It seems like this is how it is supposed to be done, just like the Pharisees. They thought giving to God, uh, uh, you know, something that uh, they thought they could offer God. And then they said, we could neglect our parents. But that's not what the scripture or God taught them to do. God says, honor your father and mother. And Jesus was just taking this one aspect. And I want to challenge young people and I want to challenge those who have uh, parents who have been neglected simply because of your busyness in life. They have been neglected because of the things that you do, maybe because of lack of communication, relationships that have not been uh, good over the past. I challenge you, if you're watching this video, I challenge you that you pick up the phone or go to their home and begin to restore that relationship because as soon as you restore that relationship, the favor of God is going to hit you. It's going to be an, an open flood that will come into your life. And many things that you've been praying for that have gone unanswered are maybe hinging on that fact because you are not doing what the Holy Spirit expects you to do. And that's just one area. And I, I really challenge you because many times we think in this modern world that we're living in and we begin to neglect those that God has put under our care. And if you are doing that, if your heart of compassion towards those people and especially your parents is not what it should be, I challenge you this morning, begin to see God's favor as you reach out. It doesn't matter if you both look uh, at situations in a different way. It really doesn't matter because that's not what the scripture says. The scripture did not say honor your parents or love your parents or take care of them only when situations are good or they think just like you or they behave just like you. He says, honor your parents, period. And you know, the favor of God will come upon you when you begin to do that. And secondly, uh, the aspect of not looking at the world and the systems of the world, but following God's word. There are many issues around the world that are taking place. And sometimes we take stand because we feel this is what the way it should go. But when we look at God's word, our final authority has to be the scripture. Our final authority of obedience cannot be the standard that people set. You know, many times we take our Christian walk very casually. We begin to look at Christian life as uh, just something that we live and we think this is how it is. And especially if we come from a family or a, or a place where Christianity has been a uh, you know, a, a great influence. It looks like everyone, this is how everyone does it. But this morning, I want you to look at the scripture because God is only pleased with what his word says. And as we honor his word, you know, obedience is honoring God. When a child obeys the parent, the, the child honors the parent. And I challenge you this morning that you humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, are there areas in my life that I'm walking in disobedience. If you have a paper and a pen, I request you to pick it up. And in your own way, as you're going through this season of fasting and prayer, as we are approximately somewhere in the middle of uh, our time of fasting and prayer, a week to go before we end here, I want you to write down areas in your life that you know that you are not walking in obedience to God. Now, they could be small issues or they could be issues that are very big. They could be things that people don't even know that exist in your life. Hidden sins in your heart. And I want you to ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, help me to get rid of them because I want to walk in obedience because I realize obedience brings the favor of God over my life. My friend, this morning, I believe that God wants to release upon you his presence and his anointing in a way like never before. Saul, who was the great king, lost everything because of disobedience. And he got the, <clears throat> the shock of his life when Samuel said, you know what? 
I cannot even hide because Saul was telling Samuel, hey, can we hide this thing? Can it just be between you and I? And, and Samuel says, you know, it doesn't work that way because the anointing that you carry requires you to walk in obedience. And everyone that is watching here, if you are a child of God, if you have received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, God expects you to walk in obedience because the anointing that is placed upon your life is far valuable than any other thing that you have. You don't own anything else that is so significant as the power of God, the anointing of God that is over you. And I'm speaking to some of you who have probably given up on your Christian life. You have uh, said, you know what, maybe God will not take care of me anymore. I have messed up real bad. I want to challenge you and invite you this morning to say God is a God of second chance. The scripture teaches us if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What a powerful word. If we confess our sins this morning, the Holy Spirit is challenging us. Come to me. Jesus said, come just as you are. Don't let the enemy tell you that you are not good anymore because even at this very moment, regardless of what you have done, what you have said, how you have behaved, if you come down on your knees and say, God, forgive me, the favor of God is going to hit you. Remember, obedience requires repentance too. Many times if we are walking in disobedience, we can only come back into obedience by turning around 180 degrees and say, God, I'm not going to go that way. You know, many times in our lives, we come through situations, through habits that come in our life where the Holy Spirit says, you know, this is not what it is all about. My people need to be holy. Obedience also requires holiness. I pray for you this morning. Father, if there's anyone here who is struggling in their life in this aspect of obedience, aspect of surrendering their life completely, aspect of realigning themselves by the word of God, Lord, I pray that you would give them strength. Let their motives, their desires begin to change right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that they will take the stand of faith and obedience to say, I know it doesn't make sense to the world, but when God's word says it, I'm going to do it because in that lies God's favor. If you're watching this morning and needing a healing in your body, I pray physical healing uh, for everyone who needs a touch of God, whether you are at home, at the hospital, or your family member that you're praying for, a friend that you're praying for, we speak against all chronic sicknesses uh, to be healed in the name of Jesus. I just speak this morning. I, I pray very strongly that the anointing of God is going to uh, go and touch the Spirit of God, touch those who need a physical touch today. I pray for divine healing to take place. And finally, this morning as we kind of recap on what we are talking about, remember Jesus said this, the, the question that was asked to Jesus was, why do your disciples disobey the old age traditions? The Pharisees were more concerned about that and the answer of Jesus was so simple. And why do you, by your traditions, violate the direct commandment of God? And so you cancel the word of God for the sake of your own traditions. This is from the New Living Translation. I like this way. He says, your own actions cancel the word of God. That means you walk in disobedience to God's word because you put traditions over the word of God. This morning, let's reevaluate our lives. Not only write down areas that need uh, us to surrender to God so that we can walk in obedience. But I pray that you as a person, if you have put traditions over your walk with God, and especially traditions that don't align themselves with God's word. I know I've been in church long enough. I grew up in the church. <clears throat> and sometimes, you know, even though you are part of a church and, uh, uh, you know, there are traditions that, that the church kind of gathers as they keep... Uh, uh, going in their in their life and the older the church gets and sometimes these traditions kind of enter into the church and I pray this morning that you would realize that there is no tradition that is over God's word doesn't matter how good it looks obedience is better than sacrifice and remember you cannot call him Lord <clears throat> if you don't obey him you cannot follow him if you don't give your heart to him now if you have uh, asked the Holy Spirit to help you I pray that in the next uh, you know, this, this day that this, you will spend your time in saying, God, I want to walk in obedience because I recognize obedience brings your favor. Now, tomorrow, day 15 is the day uh, where Pastor Scott is going to lead you in the, in, the, in, the, in the subject of loving. And I'm sure it's going to be an amazing time. I 
usually join in and uh, be a part and together pray uh, with you guys. But I just challenge you that you make yourself available tomorrow as Pastor Scott leads in that. Now remember, <clears throat> loving can only happen when you walk in obedience. You cannot say you love somebody if you don't obey that person or you don't have that relationship of, of, uh, of following the teachings of that person, especially when it concerns our Lord and Savior. I'm going to end with a word of prayer and ask God to give you the courage to walk in obedience. <clears throat> Some of you young people that are watching here, I know the struggles that you're going through, uh, your peer pressure and other things that, that sometimes makes you uh, look different, think different, behave different, uh, simply because of the pressures that you're faced with. But I pray, take a stand for the Lord because obedience will bring God's anointing. Obedience will bring God's favor over your life. Dear Lord, I pray for everyone that is watching here. And I pray for those also who are going to watch this uh, um, uh, thing later on on Facebook. I just pray, dear God, that you would just speak to their heart. And this morning, I pray that those who watch this will take this stand and say, you know what? We are going to walk in obedience. No longer we're going to compromise our walk with the Lord. I cannot call Jesus my Lord if I don't obey his commandments. And Lord, we know that you have not put such commandments that are impossible for us to obey. But Lord, I pray that we would realize and recognize and realign our commitment by the aspect of obedience. God bless you. Have a great uh, evening. Sleep well. Uh, and we have a whole day as we start Tuesday here. But I pray that you would have a great time as you ponder upon this thought to say, Lord, help me walk in obedience. God bless you. See you next week uh, as we conclude the 21 days of fasting and prayer. And